is the most important part of distortion, you know. The transition between clean and overdriven. It's not a sweet spot, but it's where a lot of players work in, you know. A different players, anything from ACDC to, I don't know, chordal players like, like pop stuff. That area covers a lot of players. So, obviously Fender excel in the clean area, you know. Uh, there is no two ways about that. Marshall do the upper mid thing, the upper mid overdrive thing. Uh, we want to sit right in the middle there. So uh, we're known for clean and we're known for this fat overdrive. And that's basically what we do. It's not like you have to run them at seven for them to sound right. You know, they'll 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 do varying things all the way up. You know. I think that's a, an orange thing, really. Because there's, there's still a lot of amps that don't do that. And obviously, the voicing and try and make make controls so it's hard to dial a bad sound. That's another key. Uh, I mean, a lot of controls on amps. Once the players had an amp a year, they're pretty much, they could be glued down and it wouldn't matter. So there's no point in having 20 of them, really, uh, if you do it for 10. But the idea with that is that it keeps the guitar's integrity. So if it's a telly, it's still going to sound like a telly. If it's a Strat, it's still going to sound like a Strat. If it's a Les Paul, it's going to sound like a Les Paul. You pass that guitar to another player, it's going to sound completely different. Because it's a different player. It's all in the fingers, really. So. There are some amps out there that they, they you know, it, it, they mask the guitars a lot, I find. Uh, I try not to do that. that. That's one of the big goals from the design perspective. It's obviously the player is what's important. that a lot in old equipment made in the 60s and 70s you know so I like to try and keep that in the 21st century <laughs>